this lecture, we'll look at a simple pixel-based transformation that can be used to reduce or enhance the contrast in an image. After developing a mathematical equation to describe the transformation, we'll look at its implementation with a simple MATLAB function. Well, let's begin by thinking about the ways that we can transform the intensity at each pixel in an image. The original intensity for an image takes values between 0 and some maximum intensity. If, for example, the intensity for each pixel of the image is represented with 8 bits, then the maximum intensity would be equal to 255. One constraint our transformation has to satisfy is that the transform intensity also be between 0 and the maximum intensity. Other than that, the only other constraint is that every value of the original image intensity produces only one value for the transformed intensity. Well, here's an example of a transformation that doesn't change the values at all. Because the transform image would be exactly equal to the original image, this wouldn't be an interesting or worthwhile transformation. Well, let's suppose that our goal is to enhance contrast. In that case, we'd like for small intensity values to become smaller and for large intensity values to become larger. If we decide that the intensity values in the middle should stay the same, then we might envision a transformation curve that looks something like this. The low values get smaller, and the larger values get larger, and those values right in the middle say half of the maximum intensity stay the same. Now if instead we wanted to reduce contrast, then we'd need to boost the small values and decrease the large values like this. Again, I'm keeping those values in the middle unchanged. If we wanted to enhance contrast even more, we might make a curve that is more pronounced in terms of decreasing the low values and increasing the high values. And if we wanted to reduce contrast even more, we might envision another curve that would look something like this. Well, now let's think about how we might implement a transformation like this. Well, I find it easiest to think about transformations like this if I first scale the intensities by the maximum value. In that case, both the original and transform intensities take values between 0 and 1. And writing equations for various transformations is just a little bit easier for me. So the way I envision the processing that transforms my original intensity to the transformed intensity looks something like this. We take this original intensity that I'm calling I sub old, and I'm divided by its maximum value. That'll give me a number that's between 0 and 1. I'll then put that through this contrast transformation. I'll just show that generically by some transformation t. And what comes out is this new intensity scaled by I max. So at that point, if I take the result and multiply it by I max, I'll learn what I knew is. The only thing we might have to watch out for is if our image intensities need to be quantized. Say they need to be quantized to 8 bits, so they need to be one of 256 distinct values. Then we might have to put our result through that same operation, so we'll get one of 256 values for the output. So now let's take a look at this transformation when now it's defined over input intensities that'll run from 0 to 1 and output intensities or transform intensities that'll run from 0 to 1. Well, let's take a look at what this transformation might look like. Again, as I said, now we have normalized intensities. Once we've divided by the maximum value the intensities can take, our original intensity that I'm calling I sub old ranges from 0 to 1. The transform intensity also ranges from 0 to 1. 
Now, as I said, if I want a transformation that is going to enhance contrast, then what I'd like to do is take the small values of intensity, make them even smaller. So over this region, I'd like some kind of transformation that stays below the diagonal. And I also said that I'd like to have the values 0 produce a value of 0, 1 half will produce a value of 1 half, and a full intensity will keep the intensity at the full value. And then over this region I want to make the large, relatively large intensity values even larger, so I'd like my curve to stay above the diagonal over that region. Now if I wanted to reduce contrast, I'd like a curve, somewhat of a mirror image that stays above the diagonal in this region and below the diagonal in this region. So what I need to do now is find some kind of mathematical function that will have these characteristics. That is, let's say I want to enhance contrast, so I want a curve that will stay below the diagonal, come to the point 1 half, 1 half, and then go above the diagonal. So let me show you an expression for a function that will accomplish that. And I want to emphasize there's nothing magic about this function. It just happens to be one I thought would be interesting. You could probably invent one different and it would be have great characteristics for contrast enhancement or contrast reduction. So I'm going to define a function over two di distinct intervals. It'll have a different functional form over this interval from 0 to 1 half and over this interval from 1 half to 1. So I'll write it this way. So here's the interval where the input, the original intensity, is between 0 and 1 half. And here's an interval where the input intensity is between 1 half and 1. Now let me write the expression that I'm going to use over this interval. I want to use a power law expression. I thought that would be a simple one. So we're going to take the old intensity, scale it by a factor of 1 half, raise it to some power alpha, and then multiply the result by 1 half. Now let's see what happens. When i old is 0, raise it to any power, it'll remain 0, so we'll be at this point. When the input, the original intensity, is 1 half, we'll have 1, 1 raised to any power is 1, and so we'll have a value of 1 half. Now what's going to happen between, it'll depend on the value of alpha. Since i old over 1 half is always less than 1 in this interval, if alpha is a number bigger than 1, it'll have the effect of dropping the value of the intensity. So for values of alpha that are greater than 1, we'll see this contrast enhancement shape. For values of alpha that are less than 1, we'll see a reduction of contrast. So maybe, let me, let me uh, annotate that this way. So if I look at the diagonal here, and I say all of these regions, so my curve will be in this region if alpha is greater than 1, and, and then if I'm in this region for situations where alpha is less than 1. And in all cases, alpha needs to be greater than 0. Now what are we going to do over this interval? Over this interval, I'll write my equation like this. 1 minus 1 half, 1 minus the input intensity, scaled by 1 half, and raised to the power alpha. Now let's see what happens when uh, the input intensity is 1, this quantity is 0, so the output will be 1. That gives us that location. When the input intensity is 1 half, 1 minus 1 half is 1 half, divided by 1 half is 1, raised to the alpha is 1. So we'll have 1 minus 1 half, and that'll put us back to this location. 
and when alpha is greater than 1 will be in the upper region and when alpha is less than 1 it'll keep us in this region. So this is the function that I contend makes this S curve for contrast enhancement or a backward S for contrast reduction. And what I'd like to talk about next is a way that I could implement this in a MATLAB program. Well here's the code that I wrote to implement the intensity transformation that we just discussed. The code is posted on the course webpage so I won't go over it in great detail here. The introductory comments contain an explanation of the inputs and outputs and a few of the other features of the program and there are a few things I'd like to point out. The input variable round is used to determine if the output intensity should be rounded down to integer values. The code was written in anticipation of being used for other types of transformations. At this point though the only valid transformation is the S-curve that we just spoke about. It would be relatively straightforward though to modify the code if there were other types of transformations. The parameter alpha is passed through a structure variable called params. Structure variables are useful for situations like this when a different transformation might have more than one parameter. Well here's the actual code. Nearly all of this code is used to verify that the inputs to the function are appropriate and valid. That is, most of the stuff here is checking for inconsistency errors. Setting the maximum intensity smaller than the maximum value in the input intensity, for instance, is one example of an error that I check for. Well, after determining that all of the inputs are appropriate, the actual computation of the transformation is here. I use a binary mask variable, m, to compute the values for the two different regions. This is a nice way to implement a function that takes a different form over different intervals and I suggest you become familiar with using it. After computing the new values I multiply by the maximum intensity to rescale the result and if necessary I round down to the nearest integer. Well finally here's a plot of the transformations that can be produced by using this program.